Since 1967, it's been a familiar sight in the boxing world, Roberto Duran entering the ring and electricity in the air. But at age 35, after 85 professional fights and three world titles, the question is, why does Duran continue to fight? He says it's not the money. He wants to be the first man to win four world titles. The fellow is coming to Wilfredo Benitez, Wilfredo Gomez, and so Leslie Salway is coming back for four Taiwan. I mean, coming back again for four Taiwan. In his last fight against marvelous Marvin Hagler, Duran lost a close decision to the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. He'd like another chance at Hagler. It's not just to say that he uh, won the fight against Hagler, but uh, many people say that Roberto Duran won, won that fight. But standing in his way is Hagler's half-brother, Robbie Sims, whose nickname is The Policeman. And he says Duran won't need a rematch with Hagler when he gets through with him. Got a ticket for you, Duran. I'm rocking Robbie Sims and I'm here to stay, and I do intend to go all the way. Sims hopes to end Duran's comeback plans tonight. The way Sims and his brother Hagler have it planned, Marvin will retire next year, and Sims will win the middleweight title and keep the championship belt in the family. He's just waiting for Marvin to give up his throne. I'm the vice president, and uh, once Marv's done and retired and he's got what he won out of the game, then I'll take over. I'll go into the presidency and uh, be the next middleweight champion of the world. So for Duran, this fight has turned into a family battle. Hagler and Sims trying to hold on to the belt and at the same time deny Duran a shot at a record fourth world crown. Time is running out. Duran knows a loss could end his career. With Semino win, I go to Panama. Maybe I say, yeah, my brother Armando go to the play music again. <laughs> and, and that's all. Duran isn't thinking about retiring just yet. He says his weight is fine and he looks sharp while training in Palm Springs. He still has that fearsome look in the menacing eyes. Tonight, Roberto Duran tries to keep his dream alive of a fourth world crown. He wants to hear the roar of the crowd at least one more time. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy back at ringside in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace. And we have seen a fight that will be hard to top here tonight, Gil. The 10-rounder coming up between Roberto Duran and Robbie Sims to be followed by the WBC Super Welterweight battle between Thomas Hearns, the champion, and the challenge of Mark Vidal, the former IBM champion at 154 pounds. Uh, nonetheless, the interest in this fight comes because of uh, the mystery involved with uh, Roberto Duran. And this is uh, not to diminish the importance of Robbie Sims as the other man in the ring, but uh, certainly uh, the, uh, the interest revolves around what Duran is going to be able to do. Uh, the heat has gone down a little bit. We'll get a, a temperature at the beginning of uh, this fight as we see Robbie Sims come in. Definitely conditions are a little better for these two guys than they were for uh, Cruz and McGuigan as we can feel a little bit of the breeze on our backs now, Gil. Uh, and I don't think the fighters had any of that breeze uh, during the uh, featherweight championship. Here comes Rockin' Robbie Sims, 26-4-1 with 19 knockouts, rated number four in the world by the WBA, number five by WBC and IBF, and he is the United States Boxing Association champion. 25 years of age, from Newark, New Jersey. His mother is the mother of Marvin Hagler, and he now lives in Brockton, Massachusetts, and trains in the same Petronelli gym with his brother, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. He's been a professional since 1980. Victories over John Collins, Doug DeWitt, Curtis Ramsey, all well-regarded middleweights in his last outing on March 9th, the first round knockout of John Collins that gave him the U.S. championship. Roberto Duran with 85 fights, to his credit, brings all of that experience. And here comes Roberto. Uh, Roberto Duran, three-time world champion in three different weight divisions. His 19th year of professional boxing. 85 fights, 79 victories, six defeats, 59 knockouts. He turned 35 years of age last Monday. Born in Guarari, Panama, now living in Panama City. Had just 16 amateur fights, turned pro at the age of 16. This will be his 86th professional bout, 
18 times he has been in world championship fights. I guess that gives him a slight edge in experience. It's, it certainly does. And his first world championship fight, he won the championship from Ken Buchanan, who I trained. Yes, I remember your being in the corner of a most exciting fight at Madison Square Garden, the tartan trunks of Ken Buchanan from Scotland, and uh, the terror in the eyes of Roberto Duran lighting up Madison Square Garden, and there were low blows in this fight we saw tonight. There were a few in that one, as I recall. Well, it, it ended, the fight ended with a low blow, Tim. But uh, in that fight, Roberto Duran fooled me. He had knocked out everybody out in one or two rounds. He figured he had no experience. As soon as he gets into the sixth or seventh round, he'll be tired. Never was. Went all the way. And he's still fooling people. So we'll find out tonight if he's going to fool us again. Manos de Piedra, the hands of stone, Roberto Duran. Has he still got them at age 35? Well, he's a... Uh... The rules for this fight will be under the Nevada Commission, and it's a 10-round bout, of course, non-title, and the 10-point must system is involved here. There is a standing eight count in effect at the discretion of the referee, and the three-knockdown rule is also a rule here in Nevada, meaning that if there are three knockdowns in one round, the fight is over. And both these boxers in excellent condition. Duran came in at 159, the weight limit, 160 pounds for middleweight. Sims at 159 and a quarter. A 10-year age differential. And Sims the bigger man in every way, frame and, of course, the longer reach. Let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is governed completely by the rules and regulations of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Freddie Little, Vice Chairman Dwayne Ford, Sam Macias, Sid Rogich, and Herb Santos Commissioners. The Chief Physician at ringside is Dr. Flip Homansky. Also in attendance at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo and Dr. Gerald Dunn. The timekeeper, Charlie Roth, and counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lasella. The judges for this bout appointed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission are Art Lurie, Jerry Roth, and Bill Graham. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada presents a middleweight battle scheduled for 10 rounds. The referee for this contest is Mills Lane. Introducing first in the blue corner. He's wearing the red trunks with red, white, and blue trim and weighs 159 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 26 victories, only four defeats and one draw, 19 knockouts. He's from the home of his brother, marvelous Marvin Hagler, Brockton, Massachusetts, and he's ranked fifth in the world. He currently holds the USBA Middleweight Championship. Title not on the line tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Rockin' Robbie Sims! blue trunks and weighing an even 159 pounds in 85 fights he has a record of 79 and 6 59 by knockout he's a former three-time world champion from Panama City Panama Los Manos de Piedras Roberto All right, the referee, Mills Lane from Reno. The judges are Lori Jerry Roth okay. and Bill Graham. Both have your trucks in the dressing room. Any questions from Mr. Duran's corner at two seconds? Any questions from Mr. Sims' corner at two seconds? No All right, let's get it on. Come on. <laughs> Look at that, Mills Lane. Mills Lane. Let's get it on. He's a district attorney in Reno. He said, come on up to Reno and visit me. And I said, what, to get prosecuted? <laughs> What a guy. He'd probably he's prosecute you, too. He's a good referee. Public drunkenness. <laughs> I hope not. All right, here comes Rock and Robbie, and he comes bouncing out against Roberto Duran. Wearing that beard that has a little menace to his face, and uh, Sims bearded as well, but doesn't have the same menace. Little left jab by Duran against Sims' early attention. Sims with 19 KOs and 26 bouts, and he rocked. Duran there catching him off balance, and then Duran gives him a little of the old cutes spinning yeah, around. You can expect that to see that from Roberto for the entire fight. He'll be trying to spin him, push him, tie him up. Sims last outing, a first round knockout over John Collins, who was favored in that bout. Duran coming off two consecutive knockouts over unknowns down in Panama as he makes his latest comeback. 
Uh, Simmons is trying to emulate his brother, Marvelous Marvin. You don't know whether he's a southpaw or, or fighting orthodox. He's facing Roberto Duran, and his balance is not that good. Well, we say hello to our friend and colleague, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, watching in at home. He's feeling better. He's going to make his big announcement about who's going to be next uh, sometime next week, according to Pat Petronelli. The announcement will be made at a press conference in Boston. A couple of good left hooks to the body by Duran. And in the gymnasium, Duran did not show too much offensive ability. Very cute. Applied at his time. That's the way he's starting the fight. There's that left hook to the body. Round one. This is a 10-round middleweight fight. Sims' balance is terrible, Tim. One minute he's fighting orthodox, and his feet get mixed up, and he switches to southpaw. He better make up his mind which way he wants to fight. Sims is the USBA champion, but that title is not at stake tonight. But the winner of this certainly advanced. There's a solid left hook that wobbles him. Yes, he hurt. He hurt Sims with that left hook. No question about that. That got Sims' attention. Solid left jab by Sims, and then he pulls away from Duran. Using his elbows on Duran. And watch Sims' feet. He just went way off balance again trying to throw a punch. Under the 30 second there, there mark. There they go, go again. Little uh, cut on the cheekbone, high on the left cheekbone of Robbie Sims. Should not be a problem during the fight. But it shows uh, the effect of some early damage by Duran, and he lands a combination. And right hand, left hook to the body. Good, beautiful combination. And a right hand at the bell, ending round number one. A good round for Roberto Duran. And much of the crowd will be for him. Obviously, we'll have a Latin following here, but uh, there are boxing fans who just are fascinated by what this guy has done over the years. And he has just got tons and tons of fans here in the United States. So there'll be certainly at least as many for Duran as for Robbie Sims, maybe more. Tim, I'd say many more people will be for Duran. And he's earned it. He's one of the legends in boxing. He's always been a great performer. Uh, and I think he showed us in the first round that he still has something left. They just put grease uh, on the left cheekbone of Robbie Sims where he had that little slight cut. Now, oh, now, now Goody's wiping the grease off, but you can't wipe it all off. Good, good corner trick. Goody Petronelli in the corner with Pat Petronelli and, and yet another Petronelli, Tony, a former boxer with Pat Petronelli's son, making his first appearance in the corner. Robbie Sims. Round number two scheduled for 10. Well, you would figure that the younger guy would be trying to make an action fight out of it and pressure, pressure the old guy, but Sims just looks like uh, he's a little confused in there right now, Tim. Maybe he's uh, read uh, Roberto's press clippings. <laughs> well, he claimed not to have, and it's his desire to keep the throne that his brother is holding for him when he retires. Vicious left hook, but it missed. Duran, one of the hardest guys to hit. You know, the Petronelli brothers said, you fooled us once when you fought Marvelous Marvel, but now we know how you fight. Fool, fooled me once, but never again. But so far, uh, he's making Sims look bad, in my opinion. Sims digging to the body, and Duran rips one to the body, missed with an uppercut to the chin. Now Sims doing business inside. And he lands a good right hand. And Duran bangs to the body and then grabs him. Those lane yelled at Duran, get him up. Duran still has that vicious left hook to the body though, Tim. And we know he has a good chin. Balance is very, very bad. Oh, 
Right now, he looks like he's fall down hitting the heavy bag. Under a minute to go, round two, scheduled for 10. Roberto Duran and Robbie Sims. When Sims is inside, he switches to southpaw. Then he goes outside, he tries to switch back, and that's when he gets caught off balance. Now he's a southpaw. Oh, big left hand by Duran. Caught Sims leaning. Perfectly timed. And Duran fights his way off the ropes, and now Sims muscling him back to the corner. Body shots by Sims landing. Again, Duran is making him work, though, Sims. Making him work. Short right chopping shot by Duran. Uppercut by Sims and then missed the next one. Duran seems very willing to trade with him, Gil. Yes, he does. And every once in a while, he digs that good left hook to the body. There's the bell ending round number two. Roberto Duran and temperatures, we assume, still around the 100 degree mark. Into his corner is manager Luis Spada and his trainer from the early days, Nestor Quinones. Ninety-five degrees, the official temperature now. It is 12 minutes to 8 Pacific Coast time here in Las Vegas. Low humidity, as you might expect in the desert. The wind about the same as it was earlier, although we seem to be getting a little more of it coming into the ring area than we were earlier, so perhaps it's changed direction slightly. 95 degrees. The featherweight championship fought at 110. This is round number three. Duran in the black trunks, Robbie Sims in the red. Maybe it's those tassels on his boots that are causing a problem with his footwork. <laughs> Whatever it is, Tim, it's, uh, he just can't seem to make up his mind which way he wants to fight. But he throws a punch, his legs don't hold him, and he goes off balance. Solid left jab to the face of Duran. You see that right foot come forward? Look, look at the way his feet are now. Another left landed by Sims. to the body by Duran. A typical Duran move, Tim. I don't know anybody else I've ever seen make that move. I think he's trying to get out of the way, and the next thing you know, bang, you get hit in the body. Right hand lead scored by Sims. And then he fell into Duran after he landed it. I, I think if they had Duran fainting and let, let Sims lead, he's going to be able to hit him with a lot of counters because Sims' balance is so bad. Scheduled for 10. There we go again. Anytime Sims leads, he's, he's off balance. There he goes again. Good uppercut scored. Good uppercut. Ran waiting for the clinch there. And no lanes comes in to separate them. And he comes off quickly with a combination. Boy, the, you know, you want to call him a wily old coyote. It's just well, hard to resist that. He just lulls you to sleep. Looked like he wasn't going to do anything, and then bang, bang. Under a minute to go. In round three. Nice combination by Sims. And a left hook by Sims. Counter punching back by Duran. Anytime he's inside, though, Tim, he's, he switches and he fights southpaw. Outside, he's fighting orthodox style. Very unusual. Under the 30-second mark, Sims keeping Duran pinned on the ropes now. Bang out. Oh, good, he got two hands open. There's a good left hand by Rob. 
Bobby Sims in the final seconds of round number three. Good combination. Sims coming alive here. Oh, big right hand. By Duran right just before the bell. The judges are Art Lurie, Jerry Roth, and Bill Graham, all experienced Las Vegas officials scoring on the 10-point bus system. And there's a short right by Roberto Duran. Connie Stevens at ringside, and he is a partisan Roberto Duran. Here, here, Roberto. Well, Final round of this 10 round middleweight fight. You know, Tim, this is an important point. Here, here we have now Sims boxing Southpaw again after boxing the last two rounds the other way. But this, everybody should really watch this round because if Duran loses, this may be the last time we ever have the privilege of seeing him in the ring. Good point, Gil. From what I could see, they're trying to freshen up Duran in the corner because they want him to win this round because I think he really needs it. Well, that's right. This is the round. It's a very significant round. It's a tough fight to score. Again, Sims the busier, Duran the more effective. We heard from Richie Sandoval, a former WBA Bantamweight champion. But you see, when Sims can miss and go off balance the way he went and Duran still couldn't count it, that means Duran has very, very little left. Sims properly getting some pressure on and I think Duran is taking too long to get set now. And look at Sims' legs are not too good. And nonetheless, a remarkable performance. Oh, fantastic. Win, loser, draw by Roberto Duran into the 10th round, 95 degree heat. There's a good solid left by Sims. Misses with a wild hook. Is he hooking or crossing? I'm not sure which way he's lined well, up at the moment. <laughs> right now, right now he's, he's in no man's land. Duran again has to land the big punch to come back in this round. Sims staying busy. Credit to him here in this 10th round. He knows he's got to finish busy. Right hand. Right hand. That may bring him back, Sim. Again, another big right hand. Make him back. No, he just is so tired. Yeah, he's gasping for air now. But oh, that right hand. There it goes. That's the big punch. Every time he looks like he's about to fall down out of exhaustion, he lets a punch fly. But here's Sims. That's Sims that big, a good flurry. big championship heart, Tim. You can't give anybody a heart, the kind of heart that Duran has. Look, look how smart he is. Let the referee do all the work that time. Sims comes in, lands a left hook lead. Anyhow, Sims knows he was in a fight. Well, you're not kidding. He's all lumped up under both eyes. And Duran, listening to his corner, Nestor Quinones. Richie, can you pick up any Quinones' comments? He's been hollering at Duran. Duran, hey, look, look, he's they talking want to, to his corner. They wanted to stay busy with the jab. He was they, talking to his corner. I think maybe he's saying, you come on out of here and finish, man. I'm tired. He's just leaning over the ropes trying to rest for the... Well, this may have been the flurry that it has turned the fight around. Sims has got him propped up over there, firing away, and Duran ineffective here. There's a left by Sims. You Good know strong finish by Robbie Sims. That's the bell. It's all over with Duran finishing in fatigue on the ropes and a good flurry by Sims, who did a good job in what might have been the key round of the fight. Yes, it may have. Uh, Quinones was flagging, throwing the jab. He wanted uh, Duran to follow up and throw some punches because, you know, the, the round's running and he's going to end up losing the fight if you don't throw no punches. Richie, I don't think he was capable at the end of throwing punches. I'm going to head up into the ring. Yeah, I think we'll try and get the scorecards after this. I think it'll be interesting to see how the judges have scored a, a fight that's tough to score. If you wouldn't mind staying here with Gil, uh, sure. we'll see I don't some mind. replays and I'll head up. You know, Rich, this is very similar to uh, Duran's fight with Marvelous Marvin. Well, let's, let's look at this last sequence of um, Roberto Duran when he was very, very fatigued, just about made it through the 10th round, and you can just see Sims wailing away, Roberto trying to use his smarts, but not trying to punch back. He's trying to kill the clock, yeah, get through the round. That's right. He nailed with some real good punches. That This may have been the turning point in the fight. That's right. He's just in the offensive, I mean, defense, and he's trying to make Sims throw punches and trying to wear the clock down. Well, 
again, when he fought Marvelous Marvin, Sim's brother, that was a 15-round fight. Right. Again, he was very, very even at the end of 12, 13 rounds, and he ran completely out of gas. He couldn't make it go, and consequently, Marvin won the last couple of rounds and won the fight. Now the same thing happened here. Now here we see the CompuPunch scorecard, and they have Duran landing 28 effective punches to 15 for Sims, and Sims landing more punches than Duran. So again, as we said, early in the fight, in the middle of the fight, and again, it depends on whether the judge is like a busier guy or a more effective right. guy. You pay your money and you take your choice. I think uh, Duran's going to really get a good idea of whether he's going to keep going or not, because uh, he surely really gasped for a lot of air for this round. All right, now let's go up to the ring to Tim Ryan. All right, Gil, I think we're ready for the decision. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, here is the official scoring. We have a split decision. Judge Bill Graham scores the bout 97-92 for Robbie Sims. Art Laurie scores at 96-94 for Roberto Duran. And Judge Jerry Roth has it 95-94 for the winner. On a split decision here at Caesars Palace, Rockin' Robbie Sims! All right, Robbie Sims, the winner of this bout against Roberto Duran, and a very important win for Robbie Sims, because he wanted badly to hold off the drive. Uh, Roberto Duran, who was after his brother's crown, and Robbie Sims with a split decision here, and more than he uh, bargained for, I'm sure. And here are the two warriors now. Robbie Sims, uh, it's worth it. I, I'm, uh, I've got to say, uh, even though you're lumped up, you won the fight, a split decision. You had to be surprised at what this old man gave you. I was very surprised. He's a tough. I knew he was tough. I trained for a tough fight, and as you see, I was there. For everything he had, I tried to put out better, and I got a little weary in there in the middle of the rounds, and I slowed down. I shouldn't have. I should have kept up the pressure. I had him hurt. Well, they call it a low blow, but I caught him with a left hook, and he went down, and they call it a low blow for the Burger Duran. But how, about the, how about the heat? Was that a factor? No, I felt good out there. The heat didn't bother me. Actually, I trained for a 12 hot round. Well, you said all, all along that you wanted to win this for your brother, so to make sure that that crown stays in the Hagler Keep family. In the family. And your brother Marvin family. looking in at home tonight. I know he's proud of you. Happy birthday, stuff. <laughs> Bringing it home. <laughs> all right. Robbie Sims, congratulations. One of the top five middleweights in the world, and no doubt headed to his own title opportunity. Right. Next, we're going to get ready for Kitchen. And like I've been saying, with Roberto Duran being the one to beat, and James Kitchen staying next to me, Robbie Marvin Sims is back and here to stay. You're not doing 10 to go all the way. Don't let this, this eye fool you. <laughs> okay, Robbie. Robbie Sims. The winner here over Roberto Duran. Roberto is still with us. Roberto Luis Vada, uh, obviously uh, a tremendous performance by Duran, better than anybody expected. Did he feel he won the fight? You think you won? <laughs> que para mí en la mano me ganó por el dato el naidón porque cuando yo pegué yo me iba a tirar para la esquina de allá y al fondo me cogió me cogió bien porque me iba a tirar para allá it was feeling that because of the of that point that they take it when when he fall down uh, that point that they, they denied that that was the fight and, and maybe the last round because what was one point difference if they don't give that point to extra point to Robbie Sims I think that he will uh, win for by a split, a split decision we respect the judges but I think that a five point difference well, like one of the judges gave it was complete wrong. Okay, now Luis, obviously the question has to be, he did better than anybody expected he would do, even though he lost the fight, a close fight against the top-ranked middleweight. Will he continue? Dice que has hecho una pelea mucho mejor de lo que esperaba. Mucha gente con un hombre arranqueado llegaste al final de la pelea. Hiciste una gran presentación. La pregunta es si pensás seguir en el boxeo. Eso lo depende de los fanáticos míos. Si quieren, si no. Depend on the fan. It was the support of the fan and also the promoter, they request his service. If not, he will retire. In other words, if there's action for him, if he's offered a fight, he would like to continue. Is that what he's saying? That is what we're we saying, yes. All right, well, I know as millions of fans want him to continue. He was a little tight because Robbie Singh was with his body. Uh, uh, body weight uh, on body him, body yes. Weight on, yeah. on him. And uh, because of that, he was uh, a little tight. And, 
Especially eight, in the final round, which was probably the, the round that decided it. Yeah. The, I think the, the 10th round decided the, the decision okay. of the judges. All right, congratulations to a great performance. Roberto Duran, one of the great champions. Now let's go down to John Bannum in Celebrity Row. Brian has the card as soon as he's finished, but he's great with me I have uh, Mr. Henry Gluck, who is Chairman of the Board and Senior Executive Director of Caesars World. Mr. Gluck, this is the most amazing night so far. You know, it was a very, very exciting fight. It's about the fourth or fifth we've had in a row, which went right down to the very, very end. When we have this kind of an international crowd, we're really proud of it. You know, it's incredible. It's become the hub of the world, which is world known. What is it about Caesars and what is about Las Vegas that makes it so attractive? I think the fact that a lot of people throughout our entire organization work very, very hard throughout the year for the total entire promotion. It's not just the fight itself. We build it into a special event. People, when they come here, they've learned to expect to see a good fight, and so far we've been lucky. We've been able to deliver it most of the time. Well, that's tremendous. And the McGuigan fight, how did you find that one? That was a surprise, I think, to uh, most English people anyway. I think so. I think most people here that I've spoken with uh,